So were you were born in a hospital? No, no. I was born in in uh, Raleigh, in in a house in Raleigh, West Virginia. And tell me a story, because I know that's an interesting story too. If your family was moving. My, we'd already moved to Oswald. Uh huh. Oswald. Uh, my dad and uh, my two sisters. Two sisters and a brother had already moved to Oswald, uh -huh. and me and my mom, we were still at Raleigh, and the only thing we had in our house was was a bed that uh, where I was delivered. Does she, did everyone know she was in labor? Everyone knew that she was ready to have a baby uh -huh. any time then. Yeah. And uh, Doctor Banks was uh -huh. the one that delivered me. Okay. Uh, at uh, there at Raleigh at our old uh, uh, company house there. Oh, we do. And uh -huh. just as soon as uh, I was born, we stayed overnight. Uh -huh. And the next day, we moved into Oswald. Okay. To where we, we, you know, we lived until I was ten years old. And I suppose, you, how much did you weigh when you were born? Did they weigh you right away? Fourteen and a half pounds. <laughs> Poor mother. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I. Were you the biggest baby? I was the biggest baby. My uh -huh. brother, my brother John weighed uh, twelve and a half pounds, uh -huh. and uh, my sister Nancy, who was the first, she weighed ten and a half pounds. Oh, so nine pound eight ounces was the smallest baby my mom had, and that was the last baby. Okay. And uh, where did you go to school? Where did you go to grade school? I went to my first six six grades at. Uh, Oswald. Mm -hmm. We had a school there uh, that went to the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we uh, went first through the third, and then fourth through the fifth, and then sixth, seventh, and eighth was in. A, it was a three-room school. Yeah. There at Oswald. So I went to the uh, to the sixth grade at Oswald, and then we moved to Kilsite, mm -hmm. and uh, there's where I. I came to the seventh grade at uh, Mount Hope Junior High. And was Mount Hope, you had your own room then, didn't you? In the right. Grade? Yeah, we yeah. were seventh grade. For the grade. first time. Right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I can remember my first first uh, day at school. What happened? Uh, I, was, I was the only kid in school in the seventh grade to come to school without any shoes on. I came to school <laughs> barefooted. You know, I was the only one at, at school that showed up the first first day without his shoes on. Did anyone say anything to you? Well, you know, no, naturally most of the kids looked at me, you know, when yeah. I came, but, but most of the kids uh, that went to Oswald School, that was, a, that was a natural for them, showing up at school, you know, without any, without any shoes on, because most of the time in the summer and, and um, up until it got cold, uh, we were always uh, went without any shoes, you know. And your feet had already gotten tough. They you didn't have all, to worry about shoes. They had did calluses you? on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But it was pretty interesting, and and uh, so I remember Miss Fletcher was my teacher, and I'm sure she recognized that I didn't have any shoes on, and I kind of got a seat in the in the back of the room. Uh huh. But she moved me to the front, and she kind of took me under her wing. Okay. Did. Did she feel like you were an outsider, or she just thought you were well, sort of special? Well, uh, she knew my family, you know. Mm -hmm. She knew my mom and dad because they had a, a little beer tavern and a restaurant there in Mount Hope, and uh, my dad frequented the place some, and she knew our family. So, yeah. so I I known her a little bit before we came to to school there, but uh, I was kind of a favorite of hers, yes. So that sort of helped you get through that, the seventh grade. That, that's what helped me get <laughs> yeah. through the seventh. When did you know you were going to be interested in sports? Well, uh, uh, I knew it because I had a brother that that played uh, junior high football when, mm -hmm. when we lived in, in Oswald. See, uh -huh. uh, he got to go to junior high school uh, when we lived at Oswald, and uh, I'd come in and watch him play, uh, you know, when they played on Friday nights and what have you. So I, I knew that I was going to be able to, to get to play some type of sports at Mount Hope because, you know, we got to see uh, the guys from Oswald when they came to Mount Hope to play. Did they become big heroes then? As oh, they... <laughs> oh, yeah. My brother John was a real good player, you know, uh -huh. and uh, 
he ended up, uh, you know, being all state and and getting a, a real good scholarship. You know, full scholarship to University of Tennessee, the same place that I, you know, got the scholarship to. And were you always the biggest kid in your class? No, not really. Uh huh. You know, uh, I really didn't start growing until I, my senior year. Is that right? Yeah. You know, I was always 150 to 160 pounds. You know, from sophomore, junior, but until I was a senior, then I, that's when I uh, became over 200 pounds. And mm -hmm. Were you? Did you always play defense, or did you? Were you required to play both sides of the ball? No, I was required to play both. I was uh -huh. a, a starting fullback on offense and, mm -hmm. and the middle linebacker on defense. So I've always been a fullback and a linebacker the whole time that I yeah. participated in sports. So you were pretty fast and pretty strong. Right. You know. Uh, uh, you know. You had to. You had to be able to run pretty good mm -hmm. to be a linebacker. Yeah. And that's what I tell my. You know, any time that I do any type of sports for for kids nowadays, I say the number one thing for a kid nowadays growing up, that if he wants to get him a scholarship or if he wants to go any further in sports, he has to be able to run. Yeah. You know, if you can run if you can run a four five forty, they'll find a spot for you to play. Okay. That they'll they'll teach you how to play. Yeah. If you can run They'll teach you how to play. Okay. Did you find it hard learning just the the defensive, offensive plays, or did that sort of come natural to you? Well, it kind of come natural to me, you know, because uh, uh, it just seemed like that uh, that uh, the defense come a lot easier than the offense. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, uh, defense is more of an instinct to you than offense is. Uh, uh, Give me some examples. Uh, offense, you have to a lot of a lot more fundamental work mm -hmm. in offense than it is in defense. Mm -hmm. You just have to be a, a a real terror in defense. You can kind of let everything go, whereas offense, you have to think a little more about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You have to be just rugged to be a defensive player. And uh, you found that more exciting. I found that more exciting, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, as you got into high school and started to become sort of a superstar, didn't that make you a uh, hit with the girls and popular in school? Well, you know, uh, naturally, once you got uh, your picture in the paper and uh, uh, a lot of recognition uh, on the radio and the TV, you mm -hmm. know, uh, naturally you was recognized when you went to other towns like Beckley, Oak Hill, mm -hmm. uh, Montgomery. People recognize, yeah, and it was it was pretty nice. It was. Didn't you all win the state championship? We, yes, we we uh, we played Mullins for uh -huh. the state championship, and we ended up winning the state championship uh -huh. when I was a senior. And we had a good basketball team. Did you, you know, play basketball too? Played basketball too. We had a really good basketball team. As a matter of fact, our track we had a good track team. Uh, we ended up winning the state and the track. You know. And did you run in the track too? Uh, Pole vaulted in track mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, run the mile in track. Mm -hmm. So, so. Uh, what position you know, in basketball? I was a, I was a, a forward in basketball, mm -hmm. and uh, you know there uh, a group of us, about seven of us, went all through school together. So naturally, we played all sports together, and it worked out pretty good. Not That's only in football, but basketball and track. Mm -hmm. I assume y'all did okay in school too. Didn't get we, in trouble or. <laughs> Or well, not any trouble. Do you want to talk about any trouble? Well, we we made it through school. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, about all seven of us guys that that went all through school together went on through and and uh, got a college degree, you know. And most of it, well, as a matter of fact, all seven of us had some type of scholarship, whether it was in football, basketball, or track, mm -hmm. you know. So. Uh, so it worked out pretty good for us. Do you think anyone bought you seven together, or was that just destiny? Well, I, I think that, that it kind of, they watched us as, as a group, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, uh, if we weren't prepared for football, like Jerry Carrier and, and Bob Bolin, both of those guys pole vaulted too. They went to school on, on a, a track scholarship, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim Wheels, 
uh, and hired Griffith. Both of them guys went to school in basketball scholarship, but they were also good football scholar, you know, yeah. football guy. Yeah. So uh, each one went hand in hand. Did you think, uh, did you try to go to WVU or were you just going to follow your brother all the time? Well, I kind of wanted to follow my brother, yeah. but I, I actually wanted to go to West Virginia University. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because all there's a lot of people here in Mount Hope wanted me to go to West Virginia University, and I kind of felt like I wanted to go there. Yeah, what happened? But, but the thing that happened was uh, they invited me up there, but I had boxed the night before. And we had a guy here in town named Sanford McNeely who was the um, who owned a funeral home here, mm -hmm. and he really wanted me to go to West Virginia University, and uh, so he took me up to West Virginia University, and we drove all night long. Oh yeah. And I boxed that night, and I boxed at light heavyweight, which is 175 pounds, and I had to lose some weight to fight at that. So when we get to WVU the next morning, I was the first one that Pappy Lewis picked out. Uh -huh. And he said, uh, I thought that you weighed around 205, 210 pounds. Uh -huh. And I said, well, I did play at that, uh -huh. but I'm boxing now, and I had to get down to 175 pounds. Yeah. Oh, he said, uh, I think you're too small to play up here at West Virginia University. And that kind of made me mad, yeah. you know. And so he said, but we'll keep, you know, you can stay the weekend and what have you. He said, but I don't think that, you know, I just think you're too small to play up there. Yeah. And it kind of made me a little angry. So I told Sanford and McNeil, you have to stay driving all night. Yeah. I said, let's go back home. And Sanford said, no, we can, let's stay. And I said, no, either you're going to take me home or I'm going to hitchhike home. <laughs> So we drove all the way back, and uh -huh. that's when I decided to go on to Tennessee. And so he kind of made my mind up for me. Yeah. You know? Was your brother still there? My brother was still at Tennessee. That helped a little bit. That then, helped the whole lot. Yeah. So it worked out for me, you know. And did you start your freshman year? My freshman year, I was a starter, mm -hmm. but I got my knee hurt mm -hmm. at, right at the last game that we had, and I had to have a knee operation. And. So the next year, I had to kind of lay out, and uh, they felt that uh, my knee was too bad to play. Oh my! So then I, I transferred, and went on to Tennessee Tech. Okay. And uh, where I ended up playing a couple years there, and was a starter, done real good, and uh, from there I went into, went on into uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, so. You started at Tennessee, went to Tennessee Tech because Tennessee wasn't playing. You, wasn't going to what let, position did you play both places? Uh, a linebacker. Linebacker. Right? Strictly right. defense. Defense at that Strictly point. Strictly defense, yes. Your mind had been set right. at that point. Right. And then, uh, so at Tennessee Tech, how did they find you? Well, how did the Vikings find you? Well, Coach Caffigo sent me to Tennessee Tech because he knew that I wanted to play more football and mm -hmm. Tennessee was going to honor my scholarship and everything. Yeah. But they didn't want, you know, wasn't going to let me play. Yeah. But I wanted to play football. So he knew the coach at Tennessee Tech and so they honored my scholarship there. Yeah. And so I could play football there. But anyhow, um, after a couple years at Tennessee Tech, they had some scouts come by and the guy that was our defensive coordinator told him that he thought that I could play mm -hmm. linebacker in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And so they took, saw some film of me and decided that they thought I could play. Okay. And that's how the Vikings kind of got my name into their system. And did anyone else recruit you at that time, or was it just the Vikings at that time? Well, the Dallas Cowboys, because the Minnesota and Dallas were the two uh, new teams that came into the league. Okay. So, Dallas and Minnesota, Dallas had contacted me, mm -hmm. but the, Minnesota was more interested, so naturally I was more interested in them. And they weren't paying big million dollar <laughs> bucks back no, then, no. were they? No, no. <laughs> What they uh, offer you to start well, off with? I remember very, 
remember the conversation very well with Joe Thomas. He was the general manager at that yeah. time. He said, if you want to sign with the Minnesota Vikings, he said, we'll give you a contract of $9,500 and no bonus. And so he says, if you want it, I'll send you the contract, sign it and send it back to him. Mm -hmm. So I said, that's a chance. So yeah. I took the chance. Yeah. And did you play that first year? No, I didn't play my first year. Yeah. I was on was what they called the cab squad. Okay, what's a cab squad? That was uh, five extra guys that they keep around just in case someone got hurt. Okay. And was ready to play. Mm -hmm. So, so I didn't get to play my first year, but I got credit for for the season. So, which which helped me, you yeah. know. Uh, I still had another year of college eligibility that I could have maybe should have played and could have maybe been a draft, but I went on in. Yeah. So it was just like a a, a, a red shirt year that a, that a kid has for, for gotcha. college. Yeah. And it really helped me. So the next year coming in, I knew all the defenses and what have you, stepped right in and started right off. Nice. Yeah. Were you all called Purple People Eaters? We were called the Purple People Eaters, yeah. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Not the song, I'm sure. <laughs> well, no, it's just, uh, I, you know, I really don't know how the Purple People Eaters come by. Uh -huh. It might have came from the song, you yeah. know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's, uh, that, that was what we were the called. The terrifying uh, defense. Yeah. It, which would ended up being a really, really good defense, you uh -huh. know. We broke a record that stood for 50 years in the NFL. Uh, defensive wise. Which record is uh, that? It was the fewest points scored in the whole season. Wow. Was uh, uh, less than 10 points a game, mm -hmm. you know. Average less than, it was nine points per game that we held each team to. Did you, through most of that period, did you play with guys sort of like you did here that would be almost uh, like the seven in high school? Did you get close to them? And... Right, right. The, the most of our front four, the most of the purple people eaters that mm -hmm. we played with, with the exception of one or two guys, we played at least 10 years together. Uh -huh. And it was sort of like us, the seven guys that we From played Canada. with going uh, over a period of 10 years, we all played together. Yeah. And when you get a group like that, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know what they're going to do. Exactly. You know, like Wally Hildenberg and Roy Winston, the other two linebackers, I mean, it was just automatically when we dropped on our pass coverage or run a certain type of defense, I knew exactly what they were going to do. You knew so, what you were going to exactly, do then too. Exactly, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it worked out real good. How many years before the, the Super Bowl? How many years did you play? How many years be before you went to the Super Bowl? Well, we played, I um, started in 64, so 70, 1970. We, we were, I was about a five year player before okay. we went to the Super Bowl. Tell me about the preparation for the Super Bowl. What was oh, that it like? was, you know, you, 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 when I watch the Super Bowl now, you see all the hype that goes on. And it wasn't really like that when we played. I, you know, Bud Grant kept us under his fingernail. Mm -hmm. You know, we was, from from early of the morning to late of the evening, we were had something to do. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't get a chance to to get out and see all the limelight that the people do now. Yeah, it was nothing but focused on what what the game was going to be about and what have you. And I think it kind of hurt us. How's that? I, I think we I think we concentrated too much on, and we were too tense. Uh huh. I think we just really knew too much about the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. And I think it got our minds so wrapped up in the Kansas City Chiefs that we knew too much about them mm -hmm. that we overlooked just the little fundamental things that we should have never. What was the night before the Super Bowl like? It was miserable. What happened? We like to never went to sleep. Me yeah. and Roy stayed up and talked and talked and talked uh -huh. what we were going to do and, yeah. and what have you. And, and uh, it was just a miserable night for us. Okay. You know? Tell me about walking into the stadium. What's that like? Well, when we walked into the stadium, it was just a different atmosphere. I mean, 
uh, you had uh, 70,000 people that, that were just, uh, it, it was just a different atmosphere. But the most, the thing that I remember most about it was that, uh, that uh, Coach Grant made us stand at attention right before the, the national anthem. We always done it and had our helmets under our arm mm -hmm. and uh, stood at attention, which which is nice. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. and and uh, to honor the national anthem. Well, just as soon as the end of the national anthem was about over, they turned all these pigeons loose. Oh my! <laughs> and you talking about unloading on us? Oh no! <laughs> now those pigeons crapped all <laughs> over us. I mean, they picked on you all, particularly. They, they let them right, fly right over us. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it was unreal. Us dodging those. I mean, it was just. Nasty. This is not a good start to a game. No, it's not a good start to the game. <laughs> and it didn't start off good either. Yeah, what happened at first? You know, uh, uh, Kansas City hadn't made a first down, and they were ahead of us six to nothing. Stennerud kicked a 53-yard field goal uh -huh. and a 50, 54 and a 53-yard field goal. Oh, my heavens. And they hadn't made a first down Oh, yet. my heavens. At that time, the goal, the goal post we're on the goal line. Yeah. See, instead of ten yards back. Right. So, I mean, I mean, we were behind six to nothing, and we, I mean, we hadn't let them do anything. Right. So, so defense was doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, they played good. I mean, they, you know. You told me one time about in that game how focused you were and how. Just describe what it was like playing that. I mean, it, our defense played really good. I mean, well, I we, know they did, but how about you? Well, what uh, was your feeling during? I that? mean, it, me, I think that was one of the best games that I ever played. You know, uh -huh. because uh, when they come out in a in a, in a uh, offensive alignment, I knew exactly what they were going to do. Uh -huh. You know, it's just that we made a couple mistakes, uh, a couple little mistakes that that. That normally we could come away with a play that we didn't make the play that came up, they came up with a big play yeah. and, and and made touchdowns. You take one or two plays away from the from the game, mm -hmm. and I mean we're I mean the game was nothing to nothing really. Yeah. And uh, but it was it it was. Uh, you didn't make any mistakes, did you? No, I, as a matter of fact, I, I think if we would have won the game, or if it could have been any, uh, if it would have been any closer or what, I think that I could have been voted the most like, because I ended up making, you know, I, I made more tackles than anybody. You know, uh, I was a, the team's leading tackler, and mm -hmm. yeah, I played, played pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. I played good enough to, did your offense just not come that day? Well, we just couldn't. You know, okay. Joe Cap ends up, our quarterback ends up getting hurt. Uh huh. You know, and and uh, just some things, just some odd things happen. Yeah. That normally doesn't happen in a game. That just wasn't our day. Yeah. You know. Well, for as a matter of fact, we opened the season with them the next year. Mm -hmm. And beat them fifty-four to nothing. Oh my heaven. <laughs> we opened the season. Pretty much the same team. The same, pretty much yeah. the same team. Yeah. Beat him 54 to nothing. So the day, I mean, after you're leaving the field, did you feel real disappointed in yourself or did you feel that you'd done the best you could? Well, I felt that I'd done the best I could, but we were still losers. We yeah. lost. You know, at that time, the winners got $35,000 per player uh -huh. and the losers got 7500 Wow. That's a lot of difference in the money. Yes. This year, the winners got six hundred and fifty thousand, uh -huh. and the losers got five hundred thousand. Wow! Per player, <laughs> per player. Yes. So, the money's a lot different. Yes. <laughs> You'd still do it again, would you? Oh yeah, yeah. If I, you know, people ask me nowadays. I mean, all the licks that you took and all the injuries that you have and what have you. But, you know, if I had it to do over, I'd go back and do the same thing. Sure. And you played for some other teams, too, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. 
I ended up going to Atlanta, uh -huh. playing for the Atlanta Falcons a couple years. And then I went to the Washington Redskins as a player coach. Never got to play any, got to do some coaching. But I ended up getting a couple years with the Redskins. Uh -huh. Enjoyed it a lot. Uh, George Allen was a different, different cat. What uh, was he like? He was, uh, he was the most nervous coach that I've ever seen in my oh, life. Sorry. Right. He left no stones unturned mm -hmm. in every game that he ever participated in. I mean, he was so much different than Bud Grant, it was unreal. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell everybody this little story about George Allen. You know, he didn't drive. Oh, I didn't know that. No, he didn't drive. He, he had a chauffeur mm -hmm. wherever. You Did know. he have to have a chauffeur or that was just his preference? That was just, he worked on his, he worked on football at all times. So, so one time we had a late meeting and so something happened to, uh, his chauffeur had to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so we was all in this meeting and uh, so we broke up the meeting and his chauffeur had to leave to go do something else. So he asked one of the coaches to take him home. Well, when they got into the car, the coach said, well, where do we go to, George? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you go to your house? Yeah. George didn't even know how to get to his house. <laughs> Somebody always took him. Somebody yeah. always took him. Yeah. He, he always worked on the plays and stuff. Yeah. Worked on his book and everything. He didn't even know how to get to his house. That's a great story. <laughs> Unreal. So when did you retire from football? 1979. Okay. And why? Well, you know, I couldn't play anymore. I, mm -hmm. You know, I just couldn't run. Or, and I just thought it was time for me to, to hang it up. And I should have really stayed because George Allen wanted me to stay. Mm-hmm. And coach, yeah. And I really should have stayed and stayed and coach, but he was a hard guy to coach with. Is that right? Yeah, he demanded he demanded a lot of hours mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of uh, attention that I didn't feel that I could do a good enough job for. Him. Or you didn't want to probably at that. Well, point. I didn't want to stay. Yeah. That, you know. Yes. There's a certain and, point. And, yeah. You know, like like for an example, he came to me one time and he gave me six rolls of film. Uh -huh. And he said, I'd like you to break these down for me and put them on a chart. I said, okay. So I went I went to my room and I had my everything set up. And it took me about, oh, maybe less than an hour to break all these film down mm -hmm. and chart them. And so uh, I go have lunch and and it's, it's about an hour, hour and 45 minutes and I was having lunch and he said, uh, how about them film, when can I expect you to have them film? I said, well, I already got them all charted. Yeah. He said, you've got all those film charted that I gave you? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I've had them for, he said, well, can you come to my office and bring them? Let me see what you've got. Because uh -huh. he didn't believe that I'd done it yeah. that quick. Yeah. But that's what I'd done the whole time I was with the Vikings and, yeah. and the Falcons. I'd done that, yeah. you know. And so, so I take him and, and hand him the film and, and he goes over. And he, he just keeps looking at him and keeps looking at him and keeps looking at him and he says, who, did somebody help you do these? <laughs> and I said, no, George. I said, I've been doing these for 13 years. Yeah. I said, uh, he said, uh, are you sure somebody didn't help you do it? I said, no, I said, I've done it. Yeah. And he, he said, oh, okay. And like that. So it was about three days later, he said, uh, can you break some more film down for me? And I said, well, yeah, if you want me to, yeah. you know, I said, he said, well, do you mind if I sit with you? And I said, no. So we got a roll of film. And so we started breaking them down. Uh -huh. And so he turns the projector off. He says, well, who taught you how to do this? 
I said, well, the first guy that I started breaking film down was Norm Van Brocklin. Uh -huh. Oh, he said, you mean you've done some of this with Norm Van Brocklin? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, he's the first guy that taught me how to do it. Uh -huh. So he, he really liked that. Uh -huh. And so when I told him that I wasn't going to stay, he said, well, won't you think about it? And he said, said uh, I'd really like you to stay. And, if you want to, you can just break my film down for me. So I said, so he kept calling me for about a year after that. And wow. then, so I just didn't think I could work for him. Yeah. You know, he was too demanding and he wanted you there at all times. I bet he was impressed with you though. Well, yeah, he liked what uh -huh. I did. He liked what I did. Yeah. He had missed the fact he didn't know of your talents until then. Right. Well, he, well, he had this, uh, uh, one guy that, uh, I, boy, I wish I could remember his name, uh, a fellow that never played football, but he was a, a sort of a little computer group, you know, mm -hmm. he, and he made him hang around me a whole lot. And he he could pick up stuff pretty good, but he missed a whole lot of stuff too, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the guy really liked me because, you know, I, I'd show him a lot of little stuff. Mm -hmm. And he ended up, kind of begging me like George did to stay, and I told him I'd But I kind of wished that I'd, I'd had bit my tongue a little bit and stayed. Yeah. What did you do after that? Did you completely retire, or? Well, I, I went back to, to Maryville, and I had a roofing, yeah, I bought a roofing company and, done, mm -hmm. uh, and got into that a little bit, and then I got into coaching there at Maryville College. Mm -hmm. And I coached there at Maribel College a couple of years, and then I came back here to Charleston. There's where I had the West Virginia Rockets. Okay. I coached the West Virginia Rockets a couple of years. Okay. And then that folded up. And what did you, um, did you think that the younger generation, this new crew that you were uh, coaching at Maribel and then at Charleston, what was the difference between your Mount Hope crew and them? Well, uh, I'm sure they didn't go to the seventh grade without shoes on. Yeah. But other than that, was, well, it, was there still that camaraderie and? N no, not really. Uh -huh. They they kind of gotten away from the closeness of the, you know. Uh, uh, you didn't see that bond that that several people. Mm -hmm. together yeah you know you, the people had lost that you know brothers yeah. right mm -hmm. and you definitely don't see it today is that right oh yeah mm -hmm. you know uh, you know like like going to Oak Hill High School over there mm -hmm. you very sel seldom see three or four people together mm -hmm. you know you'll see one maybe two uh, mm -hmm. You never see three three guys that hangs together all the time. Yeah. You know, uh, like when I helped coach Sue down there. Mm -hmm. Very seldom, when uh, when the practice was over, each guy went to different ways. Right. Well, that ain't the way it was. You know when you know when I was there. Yeah. Gosh, I mean, you had five, six, seven guys together. Sure. You know. And that's how you, uh, that's how you do a team, that's, that's the definition bond, of a team, bond, that's right. Did you kind of, do you, uh, like living in Mount Hope? Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. This is living on Millionaire's Road, too, aren't okay. you? <laughs> well, that's what the, that's what we called it that's when That's what I you called it when you grew up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I delivered papers to these houses when I, when I grew up here. Uh -huh. Had a little paper out, me and Bob Bolin. How much did you get paid? Well... Uh, not a whole lot, yeah. but, but it was uh, something that we could buy some ice cream and candy and all the important things. Important things, yeah. <laughs> but this guy that owned this house right here, Mr. Wade, mm -hmm. he tipped us real good on Christmas. Did he? Yes. Yeah. He always he always had us a nice Christmas present. I don't think people realize how much those tips mean. Oh yeah. To the little people. Well, he, but he wanted his paper here early. Okay. <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning, he wanted his paper. He was the CEO of New River Coal Company. Ah. And I, 
I've stayed at that fountain up there where they delivered the papers mm -hmm. for us to, many a night to get his paper here at four o'clock. What'd your parents think of that? Well, you know, uh, uh, mom, she she didn't like it a whole lot, but but you know, summertime, yeah, you know, it was when you was out of school, she didn't mind. Yeah, but when school was in, she, you know. Well, were you considered a super smart student, or what did your teachers think of you? No, no, I wasn't a super smart student, but you know, I, I did enough to get by. Yeah. I, I should have I should have really done a lot more than what I did. But you didn't need to, did you? Well, no, I did, you know. Yeah. Uh, I did enough that, that, uh, that I knew that I could get into college. Right. But I struggled when I was in college, especially English. Is that right? Yeah, had a tough time in English. And why is that? Well, number one, uh, I didn't really, really apply myself in at, at that here. It uh, English literature, you know, was was fairly easy to me here. Yeah. But all the other, all the other was tough. And that's what you start out with in college, yeah. you know, and, and uh, I just didn't get all the fundamentals of it. Yeah. And it was tough. But, but most you made the, it. Yeah. <laughs> but most of the other stuff was, you know, common. And, Did your coach ever have to come talk to your teachers in oh, college? Oh, yeah. A little oh, something. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but most of the teachers, you know, the, i tell you what, they helped you. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, and we had a lot of... Uh, uh, assistance, you know, that 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 would that uh, if you got in trouble, that they would uh, tutors would you have tutors? Yeah. They took care of you. Yeah. I tell you, that's one thing about the uh, college athletics. Uh, they took care of the, their uh, their athletes. Yeah. And now your grandson is playing where you played. Right. right. He's playing at Tennessee Tech. Yeah, and that's where you're going this weekend. Right. And yeah. I've met him. Is that what you looked like back then in the day? Well, he looks a little better than I. I wonder. I think he's a, he's a yeah. handsome young man. Yeah, he is. He's and a, he's worked out yeah, and he's, he's fast. Good, yeah, he's a good kid. Yeah. yeah. And he's got a good future ahead of him. Okay. You know, the only thing that I work with him now, and I think that he needs to improve on, is his speed. Mm -hmm. But uh, but he's getting to play. Yeah, he's a freshman. He's getting to play, you know. Nice. So, you know, he's got four years that he can improve on. and. Uh, What's his position? He's a linebacker too. He's a linebacker and a fullback. So I hope to get to go see him this weekend. Well, if I don't complain too much, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop now.